going over my list of top five favorite TV shows of all time, it is getting harder and harder the further down this list I go. It's insane. I'm Durbin and this is my fourth video going over my top five favorite TV shows of all time Like I did with my top five favorite movies of all time I'm doing one video per you know favorite show just because like I don't know it gives me more time to talk about it coming in here at video number four We have Arrow. I did throw Arrow here But what's interesting for me is it's kind of a tie between Arrow and the Flash But I'm gonna I'm gonna be honest and love with you. Is that okay if here on the YouTube and on the internet? I just be honest with you I'm going to be pumping out some more videos about The Flash going over these final episodes of Season 3. So really, I just didn't want to overdo it on Flash videos because there are some more Flash videos on the way where I'm going to get way more in-depth about The Flash and how much I love that show. So I figured for this one in my number four video, I will focus on Arrow. You have failed this city. I love Arrow. It's got some problems for me, though. And those problems began at Season 3 where it kind of just started to lose me, but I was still interested in season three. Season four lost me. I just did not like how they brought in the magic. It kind of undercut what they did in seasons one and two, kind of like the seriousness of what they're doing. And then you go into season five where I'm just back and forth on where I'm at with it. But I will tell you this, seasons one and two of Arrow were undeniably epic. Those first two seasons of that show won me over in a way that a show hasn't won me over probably since Smallville and Firefly. I mean, seasons one and two of that show just hooked me. First off, the fighting choreography in that show is awesome. But like in season one, one of the things that won me over was I thought it was pretty smart how it was his story through season one and becoming the Arrow while going through flashbacks and showing us how he shipwrecked, showing us him on the island, who he met on the island, where he learned the skills that he learned, how he became who he became. The way that the flashbacks of uh, season one and the actual plot of season one lined up, I thought was done so well. You have great characters like Malcolm Merlin, who you just know is villainous and you don't really like him, but he's charming. And Diggle, the way they introduced John Diggle into this show as Oliver Queen's bodyguard. First off, in that first chunk of season one, the way Oliver Queen would just kind of find creative ways to get away from Diggle. It was hilarious. But the ways they decided to bring Diggle into the fold for Diggle to see Oliver is the arrow for Diggle to you know, show how he got involved with it, how he wanted to be involved with it, how he ended up ultimately believing in what Oliver was doing. Like, it was great. And John Diggle was a fantastic character. I liked how in season one, we brought Felicity into the fold. But he's dead. I mean, he drowned, but you didn't, which means you could come down to the IT department and listen to me babble, which will end in three. Two, one. And she was just this delightful comedic relief. And then they brought her into the fold and it was so awesome. And I I didn't care what the comic book said. I wanted Oliver and Felicity to get together because I thought they were right for each other. Season four ruined that for me forever. And I don't believe that now. But back in those early days of seasons one and two, that is what I believed. And I thought she was a fantastic character. I mean, I, I just always liked Felicity. Laurel's okay. My wife can't really stand Laurel that much, but... I thought Laurel was, I don't know, she was okay. And then how we meet Roy and how we bring Roy into it, how Roy becomes what he became, Arsenal. I was gonna call him the Red Arrow, but no, he became Arsenal and Thea ends up taking his place. I don't know, like things like that were just so, I just liked how the show did it. I liked how the show slowly introduced us to these other characters, slowly brought these uh, characters into Team Arrow. But season one and two were very focused. Yes, he did have a Team Arrow, he did have Arsenal, he did have Speedy, he did have things like this. But the show was focused on him. There was no question that this show was about Arrow. It wasn't about Team Arrow, it was about Arrow. It was about Oliver Queen. It was about his journey to becoming. It was about his journey, what made him what he is. That is what it was about. And that focus, that laser focus on that, even though you had some of these other side characters that they would introduce and stuff, it is what really made this show great. And there were a lot of other things that made this show great. First off, in season one, one of the things I first did not like was how much Oliver just flippantly killed everyone. I mean, he was just a 
stone cold killer wherever mission whatever mission he was on in gary just shot those arrows if they died they died whatever they're bad they're on my dad's list i'm checking them off i'm, I'm getting rid of these people i mean I didn't like that, and that was kind of my biggest negative until I saw really what that was. It was part of the story, you know, it was part of the character arc. It was part of him learning to separate himself from what he was on that island. You know, on that island, he learned kill or be killed. One of the biggest things that he learned was to separate the identity, to give the monster an identity by putting on that green hood. And so that's one of the things that we find that this is what Oliver's doing, and so he puts on that green hood and he goes and he kills. But the whole point of season one and beginning with season two is him learning that killing is not the way to do it. Stooping down to the level of the evil he's trying to prevent doesn't help anything. Two wrongs don't make a right. And so basically it was his journey to learn how to not be a killer, how to be this vigilante, how to be a hero, how to do what he's doing, but how to do it without being a killer. And then season two was brilliant because it became the challenge to that new conviction by Deathstroke, by Slade Wilson. Oh my gosh, he was brilliant as Slade Wilson. He was just absolutely amazing. Hands down, one of the best comic book villains I've ever seen portrayed in live action. And there's been a lot of really good ones, but just the way that this guy played Slade Wilson, this guy was evil, he was mysterious. He was menacing. He was strong because he had the Mirakuru serum. He was a formidable foe in every way, and he was intelligent. He was super smart on top of all of this other stuff. On top of the fact, I mean, he had the eye patch. He had two swords. And whenever that dude fought, man, it was incredible to watch. So on top of all of these things, Slade Wilson just became this amazing character. And to me, I mean, still, of all the seasons of Arrow that I watched, there is no villain that was greater than Slade Wilson. Oh, how I wish they would just bring him back and give him another full season of being the villain. I will sit through that in utter joy because he was such a great villain. So, like, that was my favorite, not just my favorite thing of season two, but my favorite thing in the whole of the Arrow series thus far was bringing Slade Wilson into it. And like I said about season one with kind of the flashbacks working, I felt it was the same thing in season two. They made the flashbacks work and kind of go in line with the story. I point that out a lot because I feel like seasons three, four, and five, I, I think they loosely go along with the story. They loosely have to do with what's presently happening, but otherwise it's kind of like, well, we started this format, so we'll just keep doing weird flashbacks. I know, we'll throw them in China this time instead of on the island. Nope, let's throw them in Russia now instead of on the island. I get it. I guess you can't have him stranded in one place that entire time because, I mean, how does he learn all the stuff he learns? I get it. What I'm saying, though, is in seasons one and two, it was like a laser focus. When we do these flashbacks, these flashbacks work with the present day story. I mean, when you get to the finale of season two and you are watching Green Arrow and you're watching Deathstroke, fight each other it flashbacks and mix perfectly with their epic fight you know five years previous and that the way they would edit that and cut that together it was just i mean chills man give me chills it was just amazing how they did that because of seasons one and two of arrow arrow is forever one of my favorite shows at least the first two seasons will forever be my favorite two seasons of that show so what are your thoughts on arrow seasons one and two but also even the present seasons what are your thoughts on this show or the arrowverse as a whole let me know in the comments while you're there, hit that subscribe button to become a Durbanian. Next to the subscribe button is that bell. Click that bell. That way you are notified the moment I drop new videos. Also, a great way that you can help support Durbania is if you are thinking about getting the Flash or Arrow or any one of these Arrowverse shows on Blu-ray, check out my description. I got some Amazon links where you can buy those movies through Amazon, but a part of that comes back to support Durbania. So if that's something that you'd like to do, you can check that out in the uh, description below. And so thank you so much. Like and share this video. I'm Durbin. Thank you for checking out Durbania.